Hi, and welcome to Window Cleaning Dude. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about taxes. So if you're new to window cleaning or if you're just new to business in general, uh, any business, including window cleaning, you're gonna have to at some point think, be thinking about taxes. Taxes are something that everybody has to deal with and having your own business, you got even more things to think about when it comes to doing taxes. Now, don't let the idea of doing taxes uh, deter you from wanting to start your own window cleaning business. Taxes are actually very simple to do once you understand it. Um, and I'm gonna talk about everything you really need to know uh, today for getting your business going. And so I'm gonna talk about everything you need to know today about taxes to help you not feel deterred about starting a business. I know when I first started my business, I was like, well, I wanna start a business, but I really don't wanna deal with the taxes. I mean, I know taxes are more complicated, right? And that's not necessarily true. It's not that much more complicated than just doing your taxes that you normally would do. And there's a lot of ways out there to get your taxes done really easily. So let's go over the things you need to know about taxes right now. So the first thing I wanna say about uh, doing taxes and having your own business is that you wanna save every single receipt for everything that you buy for your business. The next thing, the next thing I wanna talk about is that you need to have a business bank account. This is really important. You're gonna be in business and especially when it comes time for taxes. So it's important that you deposit everything that you earn into your business bank account, whether it's every day or once a week, but everything that you earn, you want to deposit into your business bank account so that when you go to do your taxes, you can see how much you earned and if you ever do get audited by the IRS, you can show them, hey, this is my earnings, everything is here, I deposit everything into this account first, and then you have a nice, good, clean record of what's going on with your business. Now, the other thing is, is expenditures. So every time that you go and buy something, you know, you get your business debit card, or if you're gonna use business checks, whatever, you go and you buy with that business debit card everything that you need from your business so that everything that you need to keep track of, it's all there with your business bank account. Now, you also wanna keep all the receipts, but you definitely wanna be able to show with your business bank account also uh, that you have bought this gear or whatever it is you're paying for for your business. It's all there, it's all recorded with your business bank account. Same thing for when you, know, you go to transfer money from your business bank account to your personal checking account, that record's also there. So that way, you're just keeping track of everything through that business bank account. Now, when it does come time for receipts and does come time for taxes, you can write off everything. And so I wanna go over uh, a pretty good list here of the things that you can write off on your taxes and you wanna do that because it's gonna just save you more money and it is all legal. So let's talk about your write-offs. So the first thing is obvious is your gear. So everything that you're buying right now, starting your business, all the gear that you're buying, all the window cleaning stuff that you're buying is a write-off. So make sure you save all those receipts uh, and not just have it on your business bank account, but all your receipts. And that includes your business name, your DBA, your business license, your, uh, your website, you know, on and on and on. I'm gonna go through some of those right now, but let's first talk about the gear. So with your window cleaning gear, you know, it's your, you know, all, everything, the bucket, the washing wand, the squeegee. If you're buying a ladder rack, if you're buying a car, if you're buying uh, ladders, all this stuff, everything. Uh, your uniform, everything that you're buying is a write-off. And now if you can't afford to buy a car specifically for your business, you're gonna get a huge write-off there if it's only being used for your business. Um, but if you can't afford to buy a new car, you can still get a write-off on your vehicle mileage for your car and for using your vehicle, you're gonna get some de depreciation there. Uh, your vehicle is a write-off. With the vehicle mileage, I take the standard uh, deductions with that, that includes the gas. But if you itemize, then you're gonna to wanna to save all your gas receipts. I don't recommend itemizing. I would take the standard deduction. <clears throat> I think you're gonna save a lot more there. But you do wanna keep track of your mileage. Now, if you're traveling all over the place, it might actually make more sense to itemize. If, you're, if you have like a large area that you cover and you're traveling everywhere all day long, all throughout the year, you're gonna get a huge ride off there on your, on your vehicle mileage. And at that point, you probably wanna itemize. So just keep your gas receipts for now. And then when it comes time to do taxes, you can decide at that point if you want to do standard deduction or the itemized deduction. Like you're going to do your gear, you're going to write off your gear, you're going to write, write off your uniform. That includes, you know, the hat, the shirt, the pants and shorts, the socks, the belt, the shoes, uh, your underwear, if you want to take it that far, <laughs> you could. You could take it pretty far, right? Uh, if you wear glasses like me and you have to get new glasses, you might even be able to deduct that as well. So just you really want to be thinking about everything that you can possibly deduct 
and, and do that. Now, the other thing that you can deduct is like your website. So you got to pay for your domain name, you got to pay for your hosting, you got to pay to maybe get your website made by somebody. You can deduct all those things as part of your marketing. So that leads us to marketing. So with marketing, you can, you can deduct your business cards, your flyers, uh, any kind of marketing you're doing, whether it's Google AdWords, anything, anything you're paying for for marketing, you can deduct. Uh, you can also deduct your liability insurance. So if you're purchasing liability insurance, you can deduct that. You can deduct uh, your your internet bill. You can deduct your phone, your phone bill. You can deduct, deduct uh, any office equipment, your printer. So if you have an office space in your home, you can also deduct a, a section of your home. So if you do actually have a spare room in your home, I would recommend making that room just your office. Then you can deduct the square footage of that room, anything that you buy for that room and put in that room. You can also, if it's your home and you, you own your home, then you can also include some of the expenditures for like painting and uh, the utilities. So there's lots of deductions there for your business and you wanna be thinking about all these things uh, and you can learn more about that if you use TurboTax. So I use TurboTax for my taxes um, or if you get an accountant, you can go and, and work with an accountant and they can also tell you everything that you can deduct. Uh, but with TurboTax, I've always used TurboTax. I use Home and Business and I have a link to that on my website if you wanna check that out, um, which one I use. Do my own taxes and on TurboTax, they'll, you know, you can do the step-by-step -step and you, it'll talk to you, it'll show you what kind of things you can deduct. And you know, you want to get creative because there's a lot more things that TurboTax doesn't mention. Uh, but once you kind of get in that mindset, you kind of start to think, oh yeah, I could deduct this or I could deduct that. Just make sure you're just doing legitimate deductions though. Don't try to like deduct things you're not supposed to because if you do get audited, then the IRS might question some of those deductions if they don't seem legitimate and then you're going to have to, you know, deal with that. Uh, and you might might come out on top or they might be like, no, nah, we're going to charge you stuff for this because this doesn't seem legitimate. So try to be honest and true with that. You don't want to have any headaches there. Ultimately, if you don't feel comfortable doing TurboTax, then I would say, you know, go find an accountant who can work with you that works with small businesses and they'll be able to direct you in terms of all the deductions that you can take. Either way, you're going to have to pay some money to do your taxes, right? Whether you're doing TurboTax or paying an accountant. So it's just not something you can get past just part of doing business, unless you have a friend who's an accountant and is willing to do it for free, then that's just part of doing business. So that's pretty much it when it comes to doing taxes. Depending on where you live, you may or may not have to collect state taxes for doing service. I know where I live, I don't have to collect taxes for, um, for the service industry. Some places only collect taxes if you're reselling goods, um, but other places will, states will charge taxes. Um, so then at that point, you're going to have to decide if you're going to charge your customer uh, taxes for the service or if you're going to include that in your price. But anyways, if you do have to do that, then you know you will have to remit those taxes back to the state. And then, of course, when you do do taxes, you're going to be paying federal and state taxes for yourself as well. And state taxes are a lot cheaper, but when you do TurboTax, they usually give you one state for free. So uh, your state taxes should be covered there as well when you do, tur when you do, do TurboTax. Um, and that's pretty much it for taxes. So if you enjoyed this video and you got some information out of this, please give me the thumbs up. That uh, shows me that you do like what I am uh, talking about here and you do enjoy my videos. Also, please hit that subscribe button, uh, become a member of my YouTube channel here and be a part of this window cleaning community and show YouTube that you find value in these videos. Also, hit the notification bell if you want to be updated on any new videos. Don't forget to comment down below and to visit uh, windowcleandude.com where you can learn more about all this stuff that I'm going over here and if you uh, this is the very first video that you watched of mine you know, go to windowcleandude.com everything that I teach and offer is there it's there for free it's basically a franchise for free for you to start your business and learn everything you need to know inside and out start to finish uh, how to do everything uh, how to do window cleaning how to use all the tools a list of items you need to buy a step-by-step -step guide uh, where to buy everything, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. And I will see you in the next episode.